good evening. It's Monday, December 5th. And uh, this is the day five of the 25 days of Christmas. Again, welcome to Everyday Talk 24-7. And we're looking at Christmas each day leading up to the day and see if we can gain a good biblical perspective that will serve us well, not only for this Christmas season, but throughout the year. Because we're celebrating the incarnation of Christ, when Christ came to earth and became one of us. That's why I learned the ter- love the term every day, because he became part of our everyday life. And we've talked about word pictures, and I gave the first word picture yesterday of a vulnerable infant. And I've got seven more to go, but there's one image of Christmas season that needs to be addressed. It's not so much about Jesus, but about someone that we associate giving gifts with with, with uh, Christmas. And that, of course, is Santa Claus. So what about Santa? Must we have a an aggressive, angry attitude towards Santa? Uh, you can see my cat, I think, running around. Hey, Echo. Must, must we have an, an aggressive attitude about Santa? Must we ban him completely? Should we embrace him completely? Well, there's a good balance here for us to understand. But what's important about Santa Santa, is that we need to understand that Santa is someone, we need to see him through the eyes of children. Because that's what matters. If we're angry about Santa, our children pick up on that. If we present him as something that he's not, children pick up on that. If we attribute all the gift, good gifts that they're being given to Santa, children get that. But we have to see it through the eyes of children. And that's what gives us the balance. And really that's the major emphasis that the scripture has in terms of teaching. Little children are the key to understanding faith. Jesus says that. So if we're going to talk about Santa, what? how does this impact little children? Growing up, I had tangible, real evidence that Santa was real. He gave us gifts that are wrapped each Christmas. And we could touch and feel and enjoy. But also, another reason that I knew Santa was real was because we left milk and cookies out for Santa. And in the morning, guess what? The milk and cookies were gone. There were some little crumbs left of them being eaten. So what more proof could you want? You've got gifts under the tree. You've got the food left out for him. That, and he ate it and, and assumingly enjoyed it. And so that's, that's pretty hard proof to deal with. And then there's the cultural story. We've got the uh, NORAD tracking Santa's sleigh as it, as it comes north, south from the North Pole. Children can see that. There's a whole cultural narrative. You can sit on Santa's lap. Santa's everywhere. So there is proof that he exists in that. And then finally, the people who children trust, if they go into the Santa narrative, the ones that they trust, they're told that Santa's real. So a pretty good case is built for Santa. In my case, um, Echo, good girl, she loves to climb. Uh, In my case, Santa, it was hard for me to finally come to grips with the fact that Santa was imaginary. And that the milk of the cookies and the presents and the titles and all that, they weren't for real. So how do we deal with that? How can we deal with this positively without getting into super negative things? If you want to have Santa symbolize giving gifts, that's okay, as long as you don't portray him as something that is basically what God's about. But the way we deal with this is not to be so much anti-Santa, but we want to contrast the gifts that Santa gives with the tangible gifts that Jesus brings. 
And this is a challenge for us. Think about this with me for a moment. What are the tangible gifts that Jesus brings? Remember, we're seeing through the eyes of children. Not through something that we can talk about in spiritual terms and the blessings of church and all these kinds of things. But what are the tangible things that children can connect? Actually, adults, anyone you give gifts to, what are the tangible gifts of Christ that can be connected? Just think about that for a moment. Is that kind of a hard thing to come up with? Here's some, spe- here's some things that are really special and practical. Obviously, we're not talking about giving gifts that are wrapped up in presents every day and having a a 24-7 Christmas tree where you can always find a new gift every day. But there are tangible gifts that can be given. I'm just going to list three here. I've got another playlist on these if you want to check them out, special gifts at Christmas. But the three gifts are a smile. Just your Proverbs talks about a smile, being encouraging to everyone. Listening ears, letting your children and people know they're important so you actually take time to listen. And then use words that are pleasant instead of harsh words or corrective words or don't do this or don't do that. Put them in the context of words that are pleasant. Because again, the Proverbs tells us that those pleasant words promote instruction. Just those three simple things, a smile, listening ears, and pleasant words are gifts that you can give to everyone. And they're gifts that represent God well. They're gifts that show there is a heart that is committed to that person because you're committed to serving God well. God is shown to be someone who is always relevant, always cool in the right sense. And then what these three gifts do is they build trust and allow you to be a refuge, a place of safety for your children or for anyone else that you're close to. They show the reality of God every day. See, these three gifts and the other precious gifts, the fruit of the Spirit, the other things that we can actively engage in, can become very tangible. And Santa's gifts cannot compete with that. Santa can't compete with that. Remember, Santa's the one who keeps a list about being naughty or nice. Well, praise God, Jesus doesn't keep such a list. He doesn't treat us as our sins deserve. So it's not about so much getting rid of Santa as it is presenting Christ as the giver of all good gifts. Psalm 72 says that all good gifts come from God. And Jesus is the ultimate giver of gifts because his life was the ultimate gift to give. So what about Santa? Let's put Santa in the right context. If you want to dress up and have a hat and, you know, say, from Santa and all that, that's cool. But don't let your children confuse that with the precious giver of gifts. And uh, probably you don't want to put the milk and cookies out, because I can tell you as one who experienced that, that was kind of a hard deal for me to get over that, because I knew Santa was real. And then to find out that he wasn't, yeah. For a seven, eight-year-old boy, that was tough. But you can still have the spirit of Santa and all that. But the underlying gift, the beautiful gift, the 24-7 gift, the everyday gift of demonstrating the fruits of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit to your children and to those precious to you, and highlighted by these three gifts, the smile, an ear that really listens, and words that are pleasant, not condemning, not harsh. But the Proverbs say that these pleasant words, they're a fountain of life. See, Santa can't compete with that. But this allows you to give an image of what what it's all about, another image of Christ, that he has impacted your life so much that all you can do is give these precious gifts to those that you love, especially your children.
So what about Santa? He can't even compete with the wonders of Christ. And that's the message that we want to give to our children. Again, love your thoughts and feedback. Check us out every day at Talks 24-7. Thank you for participating in the uh, Q&A Fridays. I love doing that with you. If you have questions, send them in, and we'll get them in in the next one, probably a week from Friday, depending on how many gifts we have. Uh, check us out every day at Talks 24-7. And uh, again, if you haven't subscribed, turn on post notifications. These Christmas videos will come right to you. Again, thank you for the privilege of being able to talk with you each day. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow for day six of this 25 days of Christmas. Bye-bye.